much. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean just that. I mean, she speaks to me in my noggin. Here, wrap this around you. I'll keep you warm. Go ahead. There. There. So, you had a peaceful three days? Don't no. you do that, David. Well, just want you to get ready for some more. This is a good place to start, so you won't be too frightened. What do you mean? Too frightened of what? Don't say anything. And above all, don't touch the wheel. Don't touch the wheel? I found you. That you know. Yes. Now, just trust me. And don't touch the wheel. What? little gang of mine. I'm sitting in this truck and everything's just fine. I'd like those tumble bumps to see for a fact the kind of top drawer he teaches. <laughs> brought this along because a lot of what Mayan tells me or told me is, uh, Mommy, I, I had to write it down. And essentially what she told me is that she and her Pleiadian people... David said that Mayan had put up an invisible force field around the truck and that within that force field, everything was safely in her control. He said she always asked his permission to do such a thing. Then he talked about the unseen energy that she and the Pleiadians had learned to work with. He called it the divine god intelligence force. He said the energy of that god intelligence and the energy of the human soul were made up of the same characteristics. It's faster than the speed of light. It's sort of like Superman or something. And that the feelings of love quicken the flow of energy to its ultimate. So this god... Energy is really scientific, you're saying? Yeah, spiritually scientific. The technology without an understanding of God is destructive. Technology with an understanding of God is virtually unlimited. And everybody, each of us, in our own souls, in our own hearts, knows that. Because our heart or our soul is a reflection of God. As David spoke, I knew that what he was saying was true. I could feel more pieces fall into place and connect. He said the divine force is what the soul is made of.
the light of the candle and I were one. I was the light. Then a strange thing happened. I looked around the bathhouse. The plant behind David glowed with a flickering multicolored aura. Then I saw David's aura. It shimmered and danced like firelight around him. And then I felt myself lift out of my body. I lifted not only above myself in the water, but right through the roof of the building. And attached to my body was a thin silver cord. I soared above the river and the entire landscape. It wasn't a dream. I was actually doing it. I soared upward, upward through the clouds. And then I felt myself change direction. I began to move forward past mountaintops below me. And then I was on my way to the moon. I soared closer and closer to the moon. I was aware of vibrational frequency around it. I couldn't see it. I could only sense the frequency. I felt like a spiritual astronaut, free and unencumbered. And then just behind the moon, I saw a nebula. I wondered if my silver cord would stretch that far. And with that limited thought, I stopped soaring. Slowly, slowly, I felt myself drawn back to the earth, downward, downward. I could see the sunrise on the other side of the globe, and then with a sudden acceleration, I was back in my body. <laughs> Shirley, are you all right? <gasps> What's going on? I was above all of this. I was above the earth. Oh my God. It was incredible. I was over this planet and I saw the other side. It was daylight on the other side of the globe. Did you see your silver cord? Yes. <laughs> yes, I saw it. I saw that stuff you talked about. Ah, finally. Oh my, my. And this, all of this, all of this around me, it was so full of light. I saw auras. The only difference between what you just experienced and dying is that when you pass over for the last time, your silver cord snaps. You know something? If this is dying, then I don't know what there is in life to be afraid of. Thanks, David. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, so. Who do you love, David? I think that when you really start loving yourself, you start loving everybody. Now, after the experience with mine, I don't think I even really know how to relate to the subject. But were you in love with her? Well, it wasn't about that, really. It was more about finding out how I fit into the scheme of things. Mayan taught me that we all create our own reality. Maybe you only exist in my head. Maybe those stars are up there only because I think they are. Wait a minute, you're saying that reality is only what we create it to be? I believe that we are responsible for our experiences because we create them. Why? Why do we create all this crazy stuff for ourselves? Well, crazy stuff's not negative. It's all part of a learning experience. It teaches us who we are. <laughs> Mayan told me that in all the cosmos, there is nothing more valued than 
a single soul. And that whatever a single soul accomplishes lifetime after lifetime uplifts the rest of humanity forever. That's how important each one of us is.